Hi, friends. I saw when it turned off. Um, but it's gorgeous to look at an okra blossom. And it's so unique. Like, so these are faux flowers here. And so okra blossoms, there's no center. It's just like a, a very thin sheath, a very thin layer of petals. And then all of a sudden, there's these interesting little stamen in the middle. And I, I, I watch a gal on YouTube by the name of Roots and Refuge, and they're Christians, and um, they're young. And um, anyways, she is very knowledgeable about gardening, and I really enjoy her. And I love it when she starts talking about the Lord. And, um, and you know, we're different. I mean, we're older, they're young, they're, you know, and they're homeschooling some and public schooling some and, you know, they're kiddos. And anyways, it's just a really interesting, because like if I met them, I probably, it would take a while for us to become friends because we would seem so different, but yet um, deep down we're the same. We're people. We're people and we have very similar interests and they have all the critters and we used to have all the critters and, you know, I mean, it's just an interesting channel to watch. But she talks about the okra blossom in her channel, on her channel. And it, she talked about it in such a way that we hadn't had any okra blossoms yet. And I was like, it's just a flower. What's that mean? It's just a flower. And don't get me wrong, I love flowers. But, I mean, I love wildflowers. They're my favorite. And... But when she talked about the okra blossom and she talked about how unique it was and how beautiful it was, and then mine bloomed. Oh my goodness. I thought I was going to cry when I saw him. Literally cry. It was, it was breathtaking. It was like, God, how can an okra, an okra plant make something this beautiful? Why? Because it literally opens in the morning, and then as the heat of the day comes, it begins to close and protect itself. And then each morning, it opens itself up, and today, it was like, it was, they were everywhere. They were, it was prolific, and we've never had blossoms like that, and like I said, one of the okra plants has been, you know, had some damage to it, and, um, but it had blossoms too. And I keep cutting the dead off as a result of what happened. And my poor husband, he's, oh, but anyways. But um, I just looked at that and I thought, only you, God, could take something that was so bitter and painful that it happened and make something beautiful again. And that's what I want you guys to take time to go think about today or tonight or in the morning before we come back together again tomorrow. And just take the time to enjoy creation, what the creator of the universe made with you in mind that the, at that moment in your life. I mean, those okra blossoms were God's gift to me and to my husband to say, I still love you. It's okay. Hopefully you've learned a lesson. And my husband kept last night trying to tell me that this was the lesson we learned. And I said, no, sir. No, sir. <laughs> this is the lesson. It's what I told you before. And you went ahead and did it your way. And, you know, and I said, you know. And so we, we kind of talked about it. And it was kind of, he's like, no, 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 no. This is the lesson. And I said, no, sir. It's this lesson. <laughs> and so... And I said, but you can keep saying it. You just keep telling me. Keep telling me till we get there, okay? <laughs> so, I mean, it just, um, if you can't tell, my husband is a very, very smart man. Um, but he's kind of bullheaded sometimes. And so, anyways. <laughs> so, I was just like, no, 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 sir. That's not the lesson we're being taught here. But I love that you're trying. And I love that you're humble. But it's that's not it yet. <laughs> So, and it just was, it got to be where it was just, it was funny. I mean, I just started laughing, like, keep, keep telling me it, because soon you're going to get to where we need you to be, but keep talking. So, anyways, because it's a progression with him. You know, he knows he's right, he's this, and then, you know, in a matter of many days, God is whittling away. And so, it's it's always fun. I mean, and I'm no different. I, I'm, I'm probably even more hard-headed, but anyway. So, all right, guys, let's get to our um, project today. 
So I said, let's bring to the table things that were free. So these weren't free, these were scraps, but I grabbed them just in case. And they were just in my scraps pile. This was a gift to us, so this was free if you're signed up. You saw my ginger and my purple. And this is an onion bag that I literally stood there and tore it off. I was determined because I thought it was more fabric-y and it's really kind of plasticky, but it's just fun. And I thought, ooh, I need that. And so, and, and just so you know, I washed these to the nth degree and I think, oh no, that's part of the yellow from here. I was going to say, did I have ginger still in there? But no, no, it was part of this. So I grabbed these because I thought they might go with it, but I don't know yet. And let's just kind of keep looking. So um, I'm going to grab a flower and we're going to kind of go with that. And I think I'm going to go with this one. It's not an okra blossom, but it's kind of similar. And, um, and my husband and I were talking because when I came in, I said, doggone, we got those big old grasshoppers. And he goes, he goes, yeah, he goes, I saw those. He goes, I caught one and fed them to the chickens. And I said, oh, that's just sick. And he said, well, you don't want them, do you? And I said, well, no, I don't want them around my, my plants, but you know, and so anyways, because I had come in telling him that everything is, everything's hungry. All the birds are hungry, so they are just wiping out anything with color in the garden. You know, the, even the hot, hot, hot habaneros. And um, I've forgotten the one, the chocolate or some kind of pepper that he has. It's really hot. Oh, burrito. It's a burrito pepper, but it's brown. And um, anyways, I mean, the man, he breathes fire. I mean, <laughs> he just breathes fire. But anyways, so I, I was just like... Ugh. Are you, you know, we've we got to be careful because all these bugs. And he's like, yep, you know, we got to we got to make sure they're not hanging out. And, you know, I told him, I said, well, one of them wasn't even like afraid of me. You know, I shoot him away and then he jumped up on top of the okra leaf while I was taking pictures. And then I had my clippers out there and I was, you know, cutting all the okra off. And all of a sudden I looked and he was like right in front of me. I was like, ah, <laughs> looking right at me. <laughs> Like, are you going to get rid of me again? And, of course, you know, I shoot them off. But, anyway, so it was kind of one of those things where it was like, oh, man. Oh, we need to get rid of these. And so, I don't know. You know, I don't know if we put out diatomaceous earth or we just say, you know, we're getting towards the end of this particular portion of the garden. You know, should we just let them have something to eat? I don't know. But they are eating up some of my tomatoes and my peppers, and all, I was throwing, I was, I was wishing my daddy were here, because I was throwing across into the cow pasture everything that had been, have eaten, and um, my, and the first threw, I, my dad was a baseball guy, you know, he went to college on a baseball scholarship, anyways, and so um, I was throwing my, you know, produce, and um, I thought, the first one, I was so embarrassed. I was like, oh my goodness, I'm so glad Daddy wasn't here to see me throw that, like, throwing like a girl. And I thought, oh, I'm getting old. Maybe I throw like a girl now. <laughs> so, <laughs> I had to throw the second one, and it was still kind of like a girl, but it wasn't as bad. <laughs> so, anyways. But, um, but, you know, I mean, it's just, it's just a time in the garden that, um, so I'm on this page, and actually, this page is upside down. Ah. You know what? We can make it work. I'm not going to worry about it. Let me see what it looks like on the other side. It is totally upside down. That's okay. We can make it work. Okay? <laughs> Do not fret. We will, we will make it work. So, I think I am going to do something like this with the B. And um, that will kind of cover that writing. And then... I'm going to put scripture up here, so let me get my scripture. But anyway, so I had thought a lot about my daddy. Today is the anniversary of my daddy's birthday. And um, my brother called today. And he was, you know, like, have you heard, you know, if you talked to our sister, you know, and I said yes. And, you know, I had texted with them last night and, <clears throat> you know, what they were going to do in light of the hurricane. And, you know, I made sure, you know, if you're staying, do you have enough supplies? And, they're not going to hopefully be hit as hard in Houston. And 
I mean, Lord willing, I was watching the news when I got back with my husband, and the hope is, is that this, this hurricane is just going to blow through quickly. And, um, you know, but, okay, so I'm going to put my scripture up here. Huh. I don't know what I'm going to, you know what I'm going to do? I know what I'm going to do. I know what I'm going to do. I am going to do something like this. Okay. And I, so you don't have to have, if you cut something out, you don't have to have the whole piece. You don't. You can still put things down and kind of cover it. And then you can put something down like that. And how much fun is that? So you start with the bottom first. You build from the bottom up, as you guys know. And, um, but anyway, so I was just, you know, and he was asking me a lot of questions. And I said, you know, they're good and every, every, everybody's going to be fine. And, you know, but um, I don't know. I just I thought about that this morning and I was throwing <laughs> that tomato. And I did put too much there, but that's okay because I can take that off. I'm not going to worry about it and I'll do it afterwards. Um, and actually, I may cover that. So, anyways, because I'm going to be giving this um, as a gift to someone. So, um, I've tried in the past to do it, and um, but usually the people I want to give it to are part of the camp, you know, part of the camp. But we have some that aren't a part of the camp right now, and so I thought this would be a, you know, a great encouragement to let them know how much we miss them, but we understand and we love them, and all that good stuff. So, anyways, but when my brother called, I was like, "Yep." you know, and everything's good, and, and I thought about it after we hung up, we didn't even talk about Daddy, and, um, you know, so I'm gonna text him later, because I'm sure he's gonna be like, you didn't even bring up Daddy, you know, <laughs> you know, well, you could bring him up too, you know, kind of thing, but, um, that's usually how it goes, but he had sent me a funny picture of his boys, and I was just like, oh my gosh, so I have two little nephews, and one is three, and one is, um, he's a year now, I think, or just barely a year, but the one-year-old is as big as the three-year-old. So the three-year-old is little, and he is like his daddy was, very, very petite, and their mom is really small, and, um, uh-oh, I just knocked my flower off. Hold on. Where'd it go? Okay, it flew, and I'm not gonna bore you guys while I dig around to find it. I'll get it for the next project. But anyways, and this one is similar to it, but it's pink, so I'll go with that. Um, but he sent me a picture <laughs> of them sitting in the back seat in their car seats, eating donut holes, and their hands, the youngest one's hand was in the air, and it was like, thank you, Jesus, for donuts, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> and I called him, and I was like, Hmm. Well, you, hopefully there's no college kids working at that particular donut shop, you know, because it's you know COVID's getting pretty wild, at, you know, in our air, in Texas and especially in the college areas. And my brother's like, well, that's a lot. We're not going there anymore. And I thought you little stinker, <laughs> you just went there. But anyways, but I thought it was so funny. I mean, I was just like, that is hilarious, and that is totally. You know, thank you, Jesus, for my donuts. I could totally hear my brother saying that to them. <laughs> so anyway, but it was so cute. But we didn't we didn't talk about my dad. But but I thought about him today, and uh, he was a he was an avid avid sport. He loved sports. I mean, he passed away with his college alma mater um, winning. I mean, he was thrilled. So you know. <laughs> Um, I was going to put this down. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to use this. Let me see. I mean, I was, a reason I did the yellow was because it would come here with this. So, let me do something with this. So, so in the junk journal world, you really don't cut things. You know, or you just start it and then you try to pull it. And I just, yeah, this is, this is like plastic. It's not going to, it's not going to tear. But I love this. I don't know why I loved it. But um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lift this up. Because I don't want to cover that scripture. I cannot believe that came up. So, but that was God's will. <laughs> and I'm covering that portion too. A little bit. So I'm going to readjust those. 
But anyways, it was a funny phone call, and I'm kind of glad this is probably the first year we haven't, you know, been like, I really miss Daddy, you know, and, and, it, it, and I don't mind having those phone calls. I had that phone call with my sister or text stream, you know, this week, and, you know, missing our parents and all of that, and we still have to do some things. I'm, I'm still neck deep in some stuff for the estate, but... um but I love that my brother had humor because he knows how close my dad, or our dad was. And he and I, or my dad and I were. And I think, you know, he's always, always trying to make sure that I'm okay. And just a sweet, sweet, sweetheart. And an absolute joy. And, uh, okay. So I don't know that I like that. But I know that I wanted to use something that was free. <laughs> Maybe if I do something like that, I like it better. You know, that's not bad. Yeah. So you just have to work it. You just have to work it. That's not bad. I like that. And it, the yellow of the bee, and then um, I am going to put a little glue up underneath that. So it'll have, it'll stick a little bit better because that's that, you know, velvet, velvety feel. Oops. Okay. So, yeah, I think this is fun. I think it's different, and I think that is okay. So, yeah, I think that's really fun. Um, if you are doing a layout of something that was free, please send me a picture. I'd love to see it. Um, when this camp is over, I'm going to turn my youngest loose and get her to post all the pictures for us, okay? Whew, it's been crazy, but it's been good. So, okay, friends, this is it. I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, to me, this is such an important passage, not only to understand who God is and his power for us, but also where I fit in the big picture. The humility of Paul in verse 11 is just so impacting, on me at least, and I hope for you as well, and understanding that, you know, in those moments where we're going through these things, it is good to understand how awesome our God is and how amazing He is and all the majesty of His power and His grace and His love for us. So, um, And I think that that's a part of what I'm seeing in this passage and a part of what I am experiencing in my life. And in, I keep hearing y'all in the same light talking about the awesomeness of God in your lives as well. So, and I'm just throwing some extra things down because it needed something up at the top. And I may put something more up there. I'm not sure yet. But anyway, so I just wanted to take this time and let us have this opportunity to think on that. Because as we go through life, you know, we really do have to understand who God is. I mean, He created us. He created us with His, He had a plan in mind. And when I try to fix things, and I have to realize that may not be what God wants. And I need to stop and just hold on and pay attention and try to understand what it is that He wants for me in my life. And, you know, and in the ones that I'm with, you know, my children, my husband, my, you know, my grandchild, my friends, you know, um, God gives us this family, and, and I think friends are family at times, um, you know, for the longest time, we didn't have a lot of family, you know, especially when we lived in the Northeast, we were on our own, and, you know, we were shown love in ways that were just absolutely amazing. I mean, it was a difficult time, but God was so gracious and sent some of the most amazing people in our lives. And, you know, when we're in those environments, are we catching the blessing of God? Are we still, what I would say, kvetching about the situation? And, you know, not all situations are fun. You know, they're, <laughs> they're way not fun. You guys know that, and I know that. But, again, God reminds us in His Word and in um, 2 Corinthians that, his grace is sufficient. It is totally sufficient in all that we go through in this world. So, um, yeah, you know, I mean, I, I, I know that 
you, I'm speaking to the choir on this, but for anybody that may be out there that's feeling like, you know, does he really know what he's doing? He does. He does. I promise you, God does. And he has a plan for you. And yeah, so I think, oh, that's what I'm going to do. All right, and put a little bit more up here. I know I just couldn't leave well enough alone. Oh, goodness. I've been watching some of my favorite uh, paper crafters um, in the wee hours when I can't sleep, you know, kind of thing. You know, I always pray and spend time with the Lord. And then every now and then, you know, I feel like lately God, and that's one of my, you know, get away and recharge and, you know, get get back to some of the things that I love kind of opportunity. And uh, anyways, I just have really enjoyed watching people paper craft. And one of them I've been watching, she's just like, okay, I'm done. And then she'll do more and she'll, okay, I'm done. And then she'll do more. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> so I kind of feel like I'm doing that to y'all. All right, let's pray. I'll let you go and I'll go try to catch my, whatever is left in my class. It's a little over half done, but that's okay. And, and it's video, so don't worry guys. Um, all right, let's pray. Dear Lord, we just come to you right now and we thank you for today, God. Lord, thank you for the free things that you give us, Lord. Your gift of salvation is free. Your love for us is free. Um, Jesus paid the price so we don't have to. It is free. It is the free gift of you, God. And thank you so, so much for that. And Lord, as we all go through difficult times... Help us to remember to bloom where we are planted. Help us to hold on to the fact that your grace is sufficient in all that we go through and that you have a will and a way for us in each of these situations. And God, as we continue in this journey, this pandemic, um, help us understand when we are to move forward and when we are to retreat and when we are to encourage others and when we are to say, hey, hold, hold up, please be safe, you know, that kind of a thing. God, help us to know what to say because the mother in me always wants to say, be safe. But the child of God wants me to speak only what you want me to say. Help me to be quiet when I need to be quiet. Help us all know what you would want in our lives, not in what you would want us to say to others. Um, I am not here to tell other people how to run their lives. I'm only here to encourage and be cheerleaders and to edify them to you, God, and to serve them, to love them. And God, right now, I have got two major emails to write that are just heartbreaking for me, and I... Give me the grace and the words to be encouraging and loving and um, just all of that. And I get so busy right now with everything that has gone on. Help me to slow down and go outside and put my take my shoes off and put my feet up on the rail and look at all that you're doing in our lives. God, our family is so blessed and we are so thankful to you, Lord. And we know there are difficulties right now, but God, we praise you and we give you all the honor and all the glory. And we give you the struggles that are going on. We give you our nephew who is recovering from COVID. We give you his parents to protect and take good care of and his brother to protect from the illness. And their friends and, and their workmates and all of those that they have they come into contact with. And we give you... My aunt, who is still recovering, and her daughters, my cousins, who are working through the journey of their mom aging. We give you the friend who just lost her daddy that we got the message this morning. We give you our friends that are evacuating from a hurricane. And the people that stay, Lord, we ask that you protect them and that you give that, that they would seek your wisdom, God, that they would look towards you to help them get through this if they're going to choose to stay. And we know there are people staying for ministry, and we ask you, God, to bless them. And Lord, um, we ask you to be with our friends that have been ill, our, our, our campers, our previous campers, God. There is so much going on right now. I am in awe how much is taking place and 
even when I stop and talk to people at the post office or at the Walmart through the back of my car with all of us with masks on and they're in the way back and I'm in the driver's seat with my door locked and shut and Lord I'm just so thankful that there are opportunities to see people and encourage them and thank them and to just listen because there's so many struggles God and if we don't stop even even when we're trying to socially distance we just pray, God, that we can be that light for you, that we can be that encouragement, that we can pray for those that we come into contact with, and that, God, that we can serve you first and foremost, and then we can love your people. Lord, thank you so much for everybody here, everybody now and in the future to watch this camp honored and humbled and just totally give it all the glory to you. Lord, please be with each of my friends this day. Until we meet again, Lord, I pray that their day would be blessed, creative, and lovely. And Lord, I pray that this day they can bloom exactly where you have planted them. And that they can know as they kick their shoes off and they look at creation, they will know what it is like to truly bloom when you are going through the difficulties of life. In Jesus' precious name I pray, amen. So... I talked a lot about the okra. It dawned on me at the end of that prayer. The reason I brought that up is that okra had been attacked through decisions my husband had made by mistake. And yet God is helping it to bloom where it's planted. So, I know. Who would have known at the beginning of this? I know. I wish it couldn't have been my favorite okra, but that's okay. <laughs> it's okay. God had a plan. All right, friends. I am excited to be back with you tomorrow. And we have two days, and then we have Monday. So, um, really, this is your time to start praying through um, War Room. And as we come out of this journey, coming through pandemic, and we get ready for the next whatever's going to come this fall and winter, um, pray through whether you'd like to be a part of the War Room. And it'll be once a week. And you get your own stuff. Um, and... Yeah, so, and I, there's a study guide that goes with the book. So, anyways, I would suggest the book and the study guide, and um, and I'll try to get something up by Monday. Um, we will take the first week off of September, and then we will start the second week, and we will go once a week. So, um, I just really feel like um, I'm kind of a little weary, not from you guys, but just from life. And so I, I would rather have that week to go continue to prep and re-prep since everything was lost. And I'm still hoping that somewhere in the midst of this excavation that will take place in this room, <laughs> and I've done some of it, but um, I'm still holding out and hoping. But also, I would encourage you, if you are going to be part of the study, watch War Room. And maybe we can do like a watch party one night. You know, that would be fun. And I know that Corey, the reset girl, has done it in one of her camps. And I think she does it in all of her camps. And um, just there's fun things. And everybody just cues up the video at the right time. We push play and then, you know, we chat back and forth by texting. And that's what we do with our kids. Like when we do a Netflix movie, uh, we do the Netflix party. And though um, we usually have one person, you know, pushing the video through, but everybody is on there chatting, and it's so much fun. But I don't think it's on Netflix, so we'll have to. I'll have to see where I can find it, um, and it may just require a purchase, and that we all agree, you know, to watch it, and then maybe get on some kind of a chat together. I don't know, but anyway, so pray through, pray that through. Um, it's something I kind of wanted to do here, but it just didn't seem to work out, and I'm totally good with that. I mean, I know technology is a beast if you're not used to it, and I am not technical at all um what i can ever get done is by the grace of god and it's clearly not not that great but um but i am i am excited to begin more room and i think it's a time of great prayer um if you're from the united states you know we have a new election and we'll not get into politics we'll not discuss any of that but um we are seeing you know of course through the the schools and the colleges and things like that the covid going up and so anyways there's just a lot for us to kind of pray through and i think it's it's a good time so all right friends 
I hope you enjoyed today. I sure did love being with you. And I thank you guys. You know, you guys are busy. You're 